Hey everyone, what's going on? It is Brad Jujin here, and today I'm playing some more Space Engineers, as I tend to be doing quite a lot of lately. And today, well, the other day, a few things came out, and that was the refinery and the assembler were actually unlocked the other day. But I never actually got a chance to actually check them out until now, so I'm going to quickly have a look at these. Now, I'm pretty sure... The refinery is simply you put in the ores and you get a ingot out of it, so that's the basics of how that works. And what you do with your ingots is you come over to the assembler and you can use the ingots in the process of crafting other things. So let me go to the assembler here. Now what does that say? Nothing produced right now, not enough power, right. So these are the things you can currently create through the assembler. So you have a construction component, you have metal grids, Interior plates, steel plates, girders, small steel tubes, large steel tubes, and you get the idea. I can just hover over it. Motors, displays, reactor components. So basically, I think it's all the parts or components that go into making what we currently can use now, whether it be a gravity generators, motors, or reactors. And even the blocks seem to come in the steel girders, steel tubes, and you have the interior plating, as well as the... Uh, what was it called? I think it was just called the metal plate was the other part that I think would go into making a simple block. Where is that? Not display, not bulletproof glass. So that is actually a neat, nice thing to see coming out is bulletproof glass. Yeah, so it was a steel plate and the metal grid is obviously going to be used in the building as well. So I'm going to go and get myself some. Oh, I don't think I actually craft anything yet, but at least I don't think I can find all the resources to craft those things yet. I have seen people spawn in items, which is pretty cool. So in my last few videos, I showed off this ship quite a fair bit, and now I'm showing off a... Well, there's, there's a few variants of this ship. I have the Hellfire variant up there, I've got the normal one, and I've also got this mining adapted one. Now it doesn't look that good, but then again, it is simply built for mining. I've just kind of adapted the arms in, so... I know, I thought it looks pretty cool, though I am afraid the missile might hit the... No, no, it's, it's clear. I haven't used it yet, this also has a ore detector on the front of it as well, and two lights replacing two of the guns, so... Oh, my hot on. I'm not sure how the ore detector actually works, so let me go in... Where is the ore detector? Here it is. On. So I'm not too sure what happens when it's on, but we shall see. And we have the tools and everything down there. But can it still, it can still defend itself? It's, it's got, I think it's got four missiles still. And it has the guns as well, and it does have the lights if I ever need to get up close and personal to something as well. So I have the auto detector on, and I'm going to see how this actually works. So I haven't actually used it yet. The, oh, that was a problem with this ship. It doesn't slow down in time. Live! Well, that was close. That was really, really close. Yeah, I keep forgetting, and also with the extra weight on the ship, it doesn't help much either. So with the auto detector on, does it actually change anything at all. I mean there's just a high possibility that doesn't actually do anything as of yet. So let me turn my lights on so you guys can see how they... I like how actually cool that looks. It's just giving me like a little box so I know where to, uh, <laughs> where to look. And let's get the drilling arms out. Let's get myself some gold by the looks of it. Let's get up nice and close and personal here. There we go. Now there is probably going to be a problem with having the framework covering the drill. I just put that there for aesthetics mainly. So we'll just drill our way through these parts here and see how much gold we can get and we can take that back with us as well. I might get some more resources whilst I'm here as well and I'll end the video by showing you guys my Hellfire variant of this ship. So got a fair amount though, it does look a bit bug buggy over there with the framework. And so let me not hit that. And I'm pretty sure I saw another bit of mineral floating around here somewhere. There's the copper by the looks of it down there. Is there anything over here? No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. So I'll go, and I might get that copper that's down over here. See, so yeah, let's go over here. Yeah, I have realized that this is a slight problem with the ship with the um, drilling parts on. Is that it does take a little while because it's only got those three engines at the front now. So, I mean, I, I've dealt with it on the normal uh, normal ship. I haven't actually really flown the mining one just yet. So let me just drift over that. Did I drift over that? I'm still drifting over that. Okay. 
So here we have the... I'm just using one because I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure this is. It looks like copper. I could be wrong though. So let's get some of this and I don't know what that is. So that, that might be stone. We'll see when we get back. Anyway, we'll just collect it. Just collect a bit and we will turn it into ingots. So, oops, I might have destroyed. I just destroyed the drill. Uh, the drill. Sorry. Ah, come back here. I don't think that was a piece I was meant to pick up, but there's all these little pieces floating around. Where's the bigger chunk? I knew there was a big chunk floating around somewhere. You're not it, but you will kind of do, maybe. Oh well, we still have one with the gold, so we can at least use the refinery to show you guys what it is that I wanted to show you guys in the first place. So we'll fly back over here. And I apologize for not having made anything decent lately. Uh, we've gone through a massive heat wave for the past few days, and since that, oh, because of that, I've had a massive heat stroke. So even now, I'm still not feeling well, I'm still feeling kind of dizzy, tired, and exhausted. And I haven't even done anything, I've just been resting, and it's... The heat hasn't helped much at all, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it has been... Uh, what has it been? I think it was... <coughs> Sorry, it's been the hottest it's been since 1940 with the temperature getting up around 45, that's about 117 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. I'm not good with con converting, I, that's, that's close enough anyway. But yeah, it, it's been extremely hot, <laughs> and because of that I've been feeling well. So I'm going to grab the ore I have here, I have plenty of it, hopefully I have plenty of it. Let's go use the refinery, I have gravity here so I can just walk. Sorry, not to my lots on, so let me drag this in here. And I'll drag this in here as well. Now, I'm pretty sure to, the way it works is you actually have to close down the console so the game can resume then. And when you're done, or when it's done, you can just go back in. And there you have it, it's still converting the gold, so we'll come back to that in a second. This medical room doesn't do anything yet, Even it just opens it with assembler, which I thought was a bit weird. Or you can craft the grinders and stuff as well. That's cool. Detector components, you can craft the rifle if you have iron, nickel, cobalt, and magnesium. Radio communications, that's an interesting one. Thrust components, gravity generator components. So yeah, it's, it's basically components for the bigger things. Maybe you'll unlock blueprints from playing in survival. So here we go, we have the gold ingots and nickel ingots. I don't think we can make anything out of that, but... You know, I can just stick it in the machine and act like I've done something. <laughs> so, they are in the assembler now. Yeah, there they are. So, if I was to try and make something, I don't think I can make anything, just this stuff. Nickel and gold. Nothing, I don't think. That was a lovely combination to have, but you get the idea. You can, once you put all the resources in here, you can click maybe up there. And then if it works, I'm going to go back to that. Not enough materials. Yes, yeah, so you drag this into a Q-bar. I guess this would be the Q-bar. And if you had the resources, it would start crafting it and you can come check on it whenever you want. So that's how that, those two things work. And let's, let me show you the Hellfire variant up the top before finishing off the video. Uh, this was a bit weird. I was trying something cinematic because... Well, that's actually something I'm probably going to end the video with. It would be an, an announcement for something I'm also working on, which we have drafts for so far, so we're making progress. Uh, what this... There's a car, typically. Sorry about that. It's pretty late as well, so I don't know why there's cars. Uh, the thing I was trying to do here was I was trying to get it so uh, it would look like a vehicle was taking off if I had the right angle. So I would just be sitting here and I'd turn the dampness off on the vehicle, park it down there so I can get myself lined up and I can just watch the vehicle rise up so it looks like someone's driving the vehicle upwards. And that's just me rambling and just doing stuff. <laughs> so um, yeah, to the right we have the normal ship, as you guys can see it in its glory. I don't know why I like the ship so much, it's got terrible handling, but I've gotten used to using it. So uh, the normal ship itself has... Four Gatling guns and six rocket pods all together, and that's the basics of it with the two big holes there. Now the Hellfire is a little bit different. It has 
Well, I actually haven't counted how many Gatlin guns that is. But you can probably guess why it's called Hellfire now. And it still has the same six missile pods. But I did get rid of the four Gatlin guns on the front, just so I wouldn't be spraying in multiple directions. And I put all these thrusters here to try and counteract the force of the Gatling guns. Now this does quite a lot of damage, surprisingly, to even larger ships if you fire it in a uh, like a long period of time. Oh god, I wish I wasn't feeling sick whilst doing this. Anyway, I'm going to show you guys its damage if this thing slows down enough. So, here we go, I'm trying to get an angle here. Let's see how much this does. So, well there we go. Don't you just love the sound of those Gatling guns? I'm sorry, that's something I love about using them, or using a lot of them, is because they are slightly out of sync with each other, so it makes this really amazing sound when they're all activated for a long period of time, and just the winding down as well, it sounds really cool. But as you guys could, as you guys saw, it actually did deal a fair amount of damage. Now, it may not have actually punched it through anything, but it did enough to actually damage the enemy ship in the floaty light. Aww, floaty lights. But, yeah, I mean, maybe if I was going on for a few more seconds, it might have actually gotten through, but, I mean, for the most part, it, god damn it, had a slight lag spike there as well. So yeah, not much, on the inside a little bit there, but not really. I don't, it, it'll, it'll be devastating against smaller ships, let me actually try that out now, before the end the episode, try it on the smaller ships. Now, obviously you can replace that with rockets, though. It would kind of blow up your ship. Oh, that's something I want to point out as well, actually. Um, rockets have been nerfed. It's something I realized just before recording this. It wasn't something I had actually noticed until uh, just before. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, in that quick run by of just a few seconds there, easily the ship is torn into pieces. It's still powered because there's obviously power. There's quite a fair amount of stuff that's actually gone into the ship. But yes, this ship has completely fallen apart. Now, talking about the uh, rocket nerf, I'll show you guys. Is it, yeah, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Now, when rockets first came out, they would blow through anything large ships, small ships, just completely obliterated. Now, what it does is it still blows through the basic light armor blocks, but what it won't do is it won't destroy components such as the uh, thrusters, reactors, cockpits, anything that isn't an armor block. So, and I've tried firing continuously against the reactors and thrusters for maybe a minute or two, and they would not blow up. So, just proof again for you guys. Don't think it actually blew it up that time. Really, the one time I tried to prove that it doesn't blow up, it actually blows up. Well, it took a fair amount of missiles to blow those up. It's weird, because I was doing a test before, and I was just sitting here just blowing it up, and just... It wouldn't do anything, it just sat here. So maybe they do take damage, they just take very, very minuscule damage. Is it gone now? Yes, it appears to be gone now. So yes, it does take a lot more rockets to damage the component blocks. Why'd you go away in one shot? <laughs> Probably because I had damaged you previously. So I guess the only real way you can really affect a big ship like this now is to actually cut off the pieces from the main ship. So if I was to go, like, for example, cutting off there, so that part would not no longer be connected to that anymore. That, that would be the main way I could picture something being done. But anyways, I just want to show you guys, uh, god my brain is still over the place, I hate being sick, but um, yeah I want to show you guys the refinery, the assembler, my hellfire variant, and I wanted to, that's that's what I was going to do before I forget it again, is I'm going to announce that I'm working on a project for space engineers, or a space engineers machinima. Now I have given away a few hints of this already. And what I'm going to tell you guys is it is called Project Gemini, or at least that's its nickname. Uh, the actual series on Machinima is going to be called Gemini Adrift, and it involves me 
and another guy doing voice acting and recording space interviews. Uh, so yeah, look forward to that, seeing that maybe in the next few weeks. I do have drafts already done, but no one can see it because I don't want anyone else to see the crappy voice acting we've done so far. But you guys should look forward to seeing the final product. We'll try and get out a few episodes done before we release the first episode, but hopefully you guys will enjoy it. It should be pretty cool. We've done it. Oh, actually, I'm not going to spoil anything. <laughs> Keep an eye out for Project Adrift. Project Adrift, oh my god. Keep an eye out for Gemini Adrift in the next few weeks, and I will see you guys later.